It's no secret that we at Motor One are huge fans of the Genesis brand. The South Korean luxury automaker builds vehicles that are consistently at or near the top of their respective segments, with one big exception. The current Genesis G90, which is meant to rival the likes of the BMW 7 Series and the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, definitely comes up short against its would-be rivals. But that might change with the arrival of the 2023 Genesis G90. To stay updated on the Genesis G90 and a whole host of other vehicle debuts coming up soon, be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. The new G90 adopts the company's current design cues, which means it finally gets this cool split horizontal headlight design to go along with this slick shield-shaped grille. Genesis wants this to be very emblematic of the brand, just like a swoosh is for Nike. When you're looking at four lines and a shield, you know you're looking at a Genesis. And yet, the G90 is a little bit softer than the G80 and the GV80, leading me to believe that this is what the company's future is going to look like. As you can see, the headlights bleed into the fender accents for a seamless wraparound appearance, a motif that we first saw on the Genesis X coupe concept. That vehicle's pronounced hips and shoulders are undeniably toned down here, but then again, the rear deck and angular taillights might as well be a shot-for-shot -shot remake of the two-door show car. And check this out. Like every Genesis with tailpipes, this shape is meant to remind rearward traffic of the car ahead of them. Remember, a shield and four lines equals Genesis. And then there are the wheels. These massive 21-inch rollers give the Genesis a planted, secure stance, while their lacy design invokes the current G90 while also giving the vehicle a modern technical flair. Of course, being a full-size luxury sedan, the Genesis G90 has to be comfortable, which is why we're starting our interior conversation in the rear seat. While Americans probably won't get a crack at the long wheelbase G90, this standard car is still plenty spacious, with as much room back here for two as a non-Maybach Mercedes-Benz S-Class. These power-adjustable seats and an 8-inch touchscreen display in the middle give rear seat passengers almost as much control over their comfort as front seat passengers. There's also so many cool materials back here, including this crushed carbon fiber inlay right here, and there's one really cool party trick. If your friend jumps out of the car and rudely forgets to close his door, In spite of the rear seat comfort, this is still a premium luxury car, so the G90 needs to cater to the driver as well as to the passengers, and in that vein, this car does not disappoint. The G90's interior is fabulous, although it is a bit of a departure for the company. Gone is the widescreen skinny display mounted up high on the dash where it's a little bit too far out of reach, and instead, Genesis has given the G90 a 12.3 inch display further down low. It's separated from the digital instrument cluster via this funky little piece of trim that kind of recalls the control panel from a fighter jet. And yet, the G90 still recalls other vehicles in the Genesis lineup. For example, the GV70's ovoid motif shows up here in the rounded HVAC binnacle, the speaker grills, the door buttons, and even this control panel in the center. Genesis continues to use a rotary gear selector in the G90, as well as a redundant infotainment controller. However, the shape and style of these knobs have been differentiated a little bit to make it easier to use on the move. Well done, Genesis. We don't know for sure what's under the hood of this car, but it's safe to say that the outgoing G90's 5-liter V8 will not be making a return. In its place should be a twin-turbocharged 3.5-liter V6, which is also found in other Genesis products. Here, it'll probably make about 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet. We've also heard that there's an electrically supercharged version of this engine somewhere out there, which should give the G90 the muscle to take on the V8-powered Mercedes-Benz S580. Speaking of electrification, it's also likely that Genesis will make a fully electric version of this vehicle, as they've done with the electrified G80 and the electrified GV70. We don't know exactly what to expect from that vehicle, except that it should have at least 300 miles of range if it really wants to take on the Mercedes-Benz EQS and BMW i7. The electrified G90 might suffer just a bit for being based on an internal combustion platform, but it'll do for now. Regardless, the 2023 Genesis G90 should be yet another compelling offering from the brand, and I can't wait to slip behind the wheel or hang out in the back seat and go for a spin. It should cost between $80,000 and $110,000 when it arrives by the end of the year.